Hi everyone, Vacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again today. And today I'm going to demonstrate how I actually equalize and set up my studio monitors for this room so that I get a flat response from my speakers. So whenever I'm mixing or mastering a song or even listening for pleasure, I know that the sound coming out of my speakers is as flat as it they can be, you know, comparing to what the speakers are. So I'm going to demonstrate how I actually do that. And part of the demonstration, I'm going to show you the measurements and graph using the Room EQ Wizard to measure the response of my speakers. My speakers, which I use for monitoring and have been using for a while now, are the Personas Eris E8. They are 8-inch powered studio monitors and they just sound fantastic. And as you will see from the result, uh, that even without any room equalization, they have very uh, smooth and um, flat response already. With the addition of my room equalization, we'll find out that we can even make it even better. So let's have a look. Now I have in front of me the Behringer ECM8000 which is a reference microphone and if you want to find out how to set up and use the reference microphone with Room EQ Wizard to analyze your room I do have two videos on my YouTube channel you can go and watch them and I go in detail of how to set it up and how to set up your Room EQ Wizard which is a software which will graph the acoustic response of your room using the reference microphone. So I won't be going through that, but uh, I will be showing you the measurements and we're going to look at the graphs as well and you'll be able to see. So first we're going to measure the left speaker and then the right speaker and both of them together. The reason we do that so we can see if there are any differences in frequency response of each speaker and how they react together because as they facing each other there might be some reflections, there might be some cancellations and things like that that uh, affect the microphone and what we hear. So that's why we do it separately to see what the, each response is. So if one speaker at certain frequency has higher uh, response or lower response and the other one doesn't and they can be cancelling each other when we combine them together, that's why we do them separately. So in usual cases what you want to do is two speakers combined because that's what you're going to be hearing when you are mixing or mastering or listening to a song at your sweet spot. So for these testing purposes, as in the past I have demonstrated, I've got my reference microphone connected to my Yamaha AG03 which is connected to my laptop running Room EQ Wizard. So I have already turned off my right speaker, so we are only listening to the left speaker. So let's uh, run the measurement. You might want to hold on to your ears, it might be some loud noise. Okay, so the left speaker has been done. Let's do the right speaker as well. Okay, ready to do the right speaker now. Let's run the measurement. Okay, now let's run both speakers at the same time. Both speakers running measurement. Well, it's important to take care of these ears because they're the most important tools. If we cannot if we damage our ears and we cannot hear anything, can't really play any music or listen to any music. So, yep. So, now we have all three measurements, the left, the right, and both combined together. So, let's get onto the screen and have a look what the graph tells us. Okay, looking at the graphs, so uh, we have our left one, that's the left, let's change that into one-third smoothing. So, you can see with no equalization to the speaker, so the sound coming Room EQ Wizard through my audio interface, directly going to the speakers and to the microphone we can see that it's not bad we have a quite a big dip at about uh, 65 70 hertz and other than that you know we have about uh, maybe two small 
peaks and one two dips and so on so that's the left speaker and let's have a look at the right speaker at one third smoothing so we can see that at pretty much around 65 70 hertz there is a dip now whether that is from the speaker response or the room response we will find out so the right speaker looks like a little bit better than the um, left one and if when we have combined them both together with one third smoothing so we are getting so as you can see they must be in phase so it must be either the room response or the speaker's response that about uh, 65 70 hertz we have about 15 db of dip so because 75 down to 60 you know that's 15 db and after that about 100 hertz on or i would say maybe more about like 90 hertz on uh, we looking quite smooth and then it is deeping about 7 kilohertz when we overlay them all together so it looks like they might be even though left and right up here look pretty good but when it's combined looks like it's creating a dip so that could be a phasing issue because otherwise there's no phasing issue in other places uh, very the same so that indicates that might be some phasing issue at about 7 kilohertz so that is something we need to watch out for and adjust you know and again some phasing issue even after that when it's fading so instead of having um, about 7 db difference we are getting down all the way to 58 so you know we're getting down to nearly 15 db of loss at the higher end now we normally want here pass about here about 16 17 kilohertz but that is you know uh, upper frequency some harmonics might be causing an issue so that's the speaker response of my speakers this is left and right combined now let's get down to our knees because this is the next step that i'm gonna quickly demonstrate to you i'm going to be demonstrating how i'm going to equalize to correct that special dip that we had at about 65 70 hertz and some of the uh, peaks and dips we had along the way as well and then at the end also now i'm going to use as i mentioned the deq 2496 by behringer which is a digital equalizer now this unit is also special because it has uh, real-time analysis microphone input as well just like when we were using for the room EQ wizard plugging our reference microphone into it to give us a graph well I'm gonna be plugging that same microphone at the back of this hardware unit so that it can generate its own pink noise and then use the reference microphone listen to the room listen to the response of the speakers and then adjust the equalization points so that we have a flat response now a lot of cases not many people will actually have a hardware unit like this to equalize their room so in that case you will be using uh, some sort of a equalizer at the output of your DAW to adjust for your room settings to equalize it so that when you are playing and mixing uh, or mastering a song uh, you're sure you know to a certain degree that you have a flat response from your speaker for this particular room so I'm gonna plug this at the back of the unit and then I'll quickly guide through and run through some of the settings and we sit back and let it do its job okay it's connected Let's get a little bit closer so I can actually show you um, the, some of the settings. I'm not sure how well it will turn up on the camera. It is a small unit and we'll, we'll find out. So I'm going to press the RTA mode and just go through the pages. This is basically graphic equalizer and it's expecting a left right input. So we're just going to select it so that it is selecting the mic. And as you can see, 
Now, because the microphone is connected, it's, the, uh, it's listening to the microphone and giving me a graph of what it's detecting. So I'm going to press the uh, auto EQ so that it can start equalizing the room. Now, I have already equalized my room, but I'm just going to press and reset that. Now, all my equalizer points are right in the middle, and they're not going to be changing. Now, because I know that my speaker response only goes down to 40 hertz, that is the specification of my Personas RS E8. So I'm just going to go down to 31.5 and I'm going to disable it so that it doesn't try to correct frequencies down to 20 Hertz, 25 Hertz and 31.5 Hertz. It will ignore those frequencies because my speakers won't be able to produce them. So next we go to the next page and now we can see it's all ready. Now I'm going to press Auto Start EQ it will actually measure the room ambience noise before it actually starts creating any pink noise or adjusting. So it knows what the room noise level is before pink noise. Okay, equalization is complete. Okay, well, the equalization is now complete. It does take about two, three minutes, but the longer you leave, the better result you would get with the EQ2496. And because it will be automatically and constantly going to all the different frequencies and adjusting them by half a dB each up and down as it sits fit. So now I have my reference microphone connected back to my Yamaha AG03 audio interface feeding into my laptop running Room EQ Wizard. So let's see, do the same measurements again and let's see how much of a difference the Behringer's DEQ2496 digital equalizer adjusted the equalization settings to give us a flat response from my Personas Eris E8 speakers for this room. So let's do the left speaker first and then we'll do the right speaker and then combine both together. So let's measure the left speaker. Again, hold your ears. Well good, let's do the right speaker. Here we go. Good, let's do both speakers together. Here we go, both speakers. Okay, we have all three new measurements with the equalizer in the chain of the audio. To demonstrate the audio chain, the microphone is fed to the audio interface, the Yamaha AG03, and then it's also going to the laptop, and then the output of my audio interface is, as you can see with those patch leads, it's going into my patch bay. And then from the patch bay, it's actually going to my DEQ2496. And the output of the DEQ2496 is connected to my speakers. So let's get closer and have a look at the graphs. And um, let's find out what sort of a difference it made. So let's compare the graph. They're already looking quite well at the moment. This is the right one. Let's do one third smoothing. So a little bit of dip there. But other than that, you know, it's only 5 dB dip. 
run that frequencies and increase that bit there. I would assume that's because of phase cancellations that needs to work out, I think. And then again, this one, so you have a little bit of dip there and some increase. And left and right combined, so this is the most important one because that's what we are listening. This is the result of my output using the DEQ 2496 digital equalizer to equalize my room. There's about 4 dB of dip around here uh, at, I say, about 120 hertz. So about 4 dB, yep, 3, 4 dB, which is not bad. And it's pretty much smooth all the way up to 14, 15 kilohertz. So um, that's probably the limitation of the speakers. So it's not, not bad. So that's as flat as I'm going to get in this room. I mean, if I actually left the DEQ 2496 longer to adjust itself, it would have gone ahead and adjusted this dip and some of these uh, dips as well. But looking at average between those two, so it's pretty flat. You know, plus and minus 3 dB is what you look at. And you can see, looking at the average there, it's well within the three plus and minus 3 dB of a frequency response graph. So there you have it. That is a frequency response of my speakers in this room. Pretty impressive, I say. I mean, that's why I chose the Presonus Eris E8. Not that I have any associations with them. They probably don't even know I exist. But, you know, using... I mean, even before the equalization, the response of the speakers was pretty flat. You know, that dip around 70 hertz could have been due to the mode of the room, that it's just getting cancelled at those frequencies. Um, and somehow it's being affected, but equalizing it gives it very nice flat response. Well, I hope this was helpful. Now you know how you can, um, how important it is to equalize your speakers to, to your room so that whenever you're listening, mixing or mastering a song, you are assured that you are getting a flat response and any adjustment you make in your mixing and equalization, you know, you can judge it uh, with uh, whatever you're hearing. So if this was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up and you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel because there are lots more videos on my channel uh, that I have and more coming up as well and you'll be kept up to date with every single one that I upload. You can also visit my website, recordingstudio9.com. I have a lot more information on my website as well, which is not on YouTube. So you can subscribe to my newsletter. That way you get uh, information through your newsletter as well whenever I upload new information, um, new products, uh, reviews, and a uh, whole heap more on my website as well. And I hope I see you there. And until next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio.